In the ESMO Special Symposium on, on the identification of new immune targets, my task was to summarize the state of the art and, and the challenges in the use of cytokines for cancer treatments. Um, as perhaps you might know, they have come a very long way uh, from the 80s, in essence, when they were first discovered. And the idea has sparked that perhaps cytokines could be an attractive tool to treat cancer. Um, however, the, the recombinant use of cytokines was maybe not very successful and maybe not very convincing, with the exception of interleukin-2, which eventually uh, went on to be approved, for instance, for advanced or metastatic melanoma. But aside of that, we've not really seen much progress uh, in, in that time. And um, I think advances both in uh, basic immunology or immuno-oncology, as well as is molecular biology, have in essence allowed to move two streams forward in this field in the recent years. So the one stream is to utilize antibodies or other antagonists to neutralize the effect of cytokines. So in the sense, whenever cytokines would have a detrimental action uh, on the immune system or, or, you know, for, or be promoting cancer, you could neutralize it, for instance, using monoclonal antibodies and, and revert this effect. And the other approach uh, is to use, as shown for interleukin-2 in, in years ago, is to use recombinant cytokines or molecules that mimic cytokine action to specifically boost uh, immune cell function in the context of, of cancer or in the context of a tumor. And um, I think the, the recent years uh, have seen uh, quite a lot of advances in, in both axes, although none of it, not all of it has been successful. Um, I, you know, I think this is a very vast field that is expanding very fast. And I just want to give uh, just one perspective on actually both axes is that what seemed to be emerging is that unlike what we thought decades ago is that, of course, a monotherapy would likely not do, do the trick. So in the end, what people end up with, and that's also reflected in the current developments, is that they end up combining. So they end up combining uh, recombinant genetically modified cytokines for specific targeting, specific action with a very obvious candidate like uh, PD-1 or other types of immune checkpoint blockade, and actually with quite some success, at least in early uh, clinical studies. The same has been seen actually when targeting uh, immunosuppressive cytokines like TGF-beta uh, and, and combining this with uh, you know, modalities that would unleash the PD-1 axis. And, and I think there as well, I think we've seen some very interesting and very attractive concepts uh, that indicate that these strategies might actually be very effective combinations in certain indications. And I think we can be very curious about what the future will bring, because these are just some examples on, on how uh, this axis can be leveraged or can be used therapeutically. And there will be certainly much more to come in the years, in the coming years, as more clinical data becomes available on much more, uh, on much more strategies, because I think we can count certainly on, on well over 100 uh, clinical trials that are investigating these approaches.